Now, who the hell sent for this? What do you think, sir? Mr. Bevan. Yes, and he's assigned another 20 officers to the case. We don't even know if it is a murder yet. It is still only a suspicious death. A corpse was wrapped up and thrown into a fire. How much more suspicious does it have to be? Mr. Bevan's word, sir. I didn't know it was going to be this big. When he said more violence in the room where a vision of a little caravan behind a police car. Not Smokey and the bloody bandit, yeah? Yes? Oh, you bastard. Pervert, shirt-lifting bum bandit. I know what you're doing. I know, and so do the police. Apart from the math people and the farmer, no one else knew that the animals were to be burnt yesterday. The boy was apparently wrapped in something, a blanket possibly, and then he was dumped in the fire. So I think it was a spontaneous decision. The boy died, possibly killed, somewhere else. So our first priority is to check the sight lines on these buildings close by and then we'll do a house-to-house -house in the three adjacent villages. Alison will allocate teams and areas. Jones, hand out the actions. And I want results by the end of the afternoon. Come on, jump to it. Wait, come on. Nothing at all? Not in this area, according to the PNC. No missing youths with homosexual backgrounds. Mind you, if you found out that your son was bent, you wouldn't make a song and dance every time he disappeared for a few nights, would you? You wouldn't. Not in a place like this. Keep saying that, Kevin. What about red boys? We'll check that too. Nothing. We could extend the scope of the search. Red boy connections in places like Swansea and Cardiff. But honestly, I'm I don't think we're going to find anything like that going In on. In a place like this? Yeah. You don't like gays, do you, Kevin? It's not that. That's how you feel. And you let those feelings get in the way of this investigation. Then you are out. I'm not going to, right? It's just that I come from a small place exactly like this one. Its own rules, its own standards. If somebody wants to be different, fair enough. As long as they bugger off and do it somewhere else. I don't really care what he did in his private life. I don't really care if he went to bed with a frog. All I want to know is how he died. And if it was murder, who did it? That's all. Hmm? Okay. Let's get on with it. So what did you do that night then, Mr. Mm, nothing much. Uh, listen to music. Albinoni? Uh, Albinoni, yeah. Uh, Big Tully? What is it, 30 inches? Uh, 32. A quiet night in, then? Uh, yes. Like big ones, then, dear. Uh, please, uh, don't mix them up. Did you hear any cars outside? Uh, no more than usual. Well, what's usual? Oh, I don't know. Uh, three, four. Did you hear any voices? Uh, no. Have you watch this? Good, is it? Well, it's all right. Of course, uh, you know what they say about him, don't you? No, and I, I don't want to know. Right, that's it, then, Mr. Ireland. Uh, we have to make other calls, but we may have to come back to Sue, recheck the details. But, but why? I, I've told you everything I know. I'm sure you have, but that's the way we do things. Thanks very much. Okay, Jones. You'd be surprised what he gets up to with hamsters. Come on. Where does he live? The bread. And what's your name? Hello? Roy Erland lives in Penabryn, the bungalow in Cumadvran. That's what the telephone informant said. And that's not all he does there either, according to him. And the fire pit would have been clearly visible from the bungalow. And Erland seemed very edgy. Well, the odd thing is, you see, he didn't ask us why we were asking these questions. It's as if he knew already. Well, perhaps he did. It's a close community. Things get round. He's obviously gay. 
Oh, so that makes him a natural suspect, is it? The victim was a rent boy, sir. That's two assumptions in one, Phillips. Oh, come on now, sir. You going up at me? Yes. All right. Yes? Have the police got you yet? No, but have they? Because they're coming for you. Stinking queer bandit. Why don't you piss off? Going out, are we? We? No, I am. Oh, where are you going to? I'm going to have a drink with some friends. I may have escaped your notice, but uh, it's my birthday today. No, it hasn't. Have a look at the top of the TV there. What is it? We'll open it and see. It's all for you, my little darling. You enjoy yourself. You don't. What is it, Josh? What's going on? However, the body was so badly burned that it has not yet been possible to identify him. So what happened, Mr. Erland? Some sex game that went wrong, was it? Oh, these things do happen. Bondage. Hmm? You know, the rope going around the neck. The excitement building up. No, it, that isn't my sort of thing. What is your sort of thing? Nothing. I don't do anything. You sure? Positive. But you live on your own? Well, that's a crime now, is it? Do you have rent boys up at your place? No. Where do they come from? Swansea? Cardiff? No. I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about the murder of a young man. But I didn't kill him. Then who did? I don't know. Professor Edwards. Detective Sergeant Griffiths entered the room. 1822. Hello, Doc. What's up? The boy, are uh, you interviewing someone? Oh, he's in the know. It was nice to see you, but why are you here? But didn't you read my notes? Well, if you remember, you didn't give me a lot of time. He wasn't murdered. There was no scorching beyond the upper part of the esophagus which indicates that he'd stopped breathing before he got into that fire. And there was no carbon monoxide in the blood. The gullet was blocked with vomit. Happened whilst he was unconscious, is my guess. He was probably drunk, full of drugs. Right. Now you're saying that that was the cause of death? Yes. He threw up and choked. What do you want? Roy. We released him. What happened? How the hell should I know? Can we trust him? Any news from forensic as to what that boy was wrapped in? 
They chase them up. Okay. And I think uh, you should go and visit Ireland. Tonight? No. Give them a night to brood on it. Tomorrow morning, first thing. of some kind was committed at Penabrini. I can't ignore it, even though it's going to encourage the local gay bashers. No. Just take care innocent people don't become collateral damage. An investigation of this kind is bound to stir things up. Innocent people are going to get hurt because that's the way they are. All I can do is try and limit the damage. Yeah, fine. But I'm sorry. I'm just not sure I'm ready to go as quickly as you want me to. Don't worry. I wait. gone out anyway. I was worried about you. Why? I went out, that's all. You seemed upset earlier. I was earlier. I'm all right now. What's wrong? <laughs> oh Christ, Dad. Jesus. Can you get on, will you? Yes. Come on. What do you think I'm doing? Oh, hello. Hi, Margaret. How are you, Anna? Hi, Dad. Mwah. What have you been doing this evening, then? Dad, um, this is Gwyn. Hello, Mr. Payne. I've heard a lot about you, uh, from Ye and Geth, then. Good things, I hope. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, this is, uh, Professor Edwards. Don't be so formal, Hannah. Margaret. Hello. Hello. Oh, we were, um, I was showing Gwyn some old photos. I see. Well, it's getting late, Hannah. There's no more time, it is. Yeah, well, uh, I'd better go as well. Uh, I'd have gone earlier, but I had a couple of glasses of wine. Thought better to play safe, you know? Play safe? That's always best. Good night, Queen. Yeah, yeah. Good night.
Going to watch Gwyn play this afternoon? What, just saw his teammates to make dirty jokes about me. Not that. She got special to kill him. Needle match. Should be good. Are you going to bloody watch it then? I'd like to. I'm sorted up to my ears, isn't it? We didn't do anything, you know? Hmm? What if I come back an hour later? Well, then there might have been a reason for you to make me feel guilty. You're so good at it. I don't make you feel guilty. No, because I won't let you. I'm not a kid anymore. Once you're under my roof... Yours! I thought this was my home, too. Hey, don't get clever. Policing people's morals now, Dad. Murder's not good enough for you. And don't get facetious. So what are you going to do? Put me and Gwyn under surveillance, yeah? Hannah, you're only 17. Yes, oh. I am past the age of consent. Now will you get off our case? Listen! Ben. Sir, we need you at Tenebrin. What? I think you want to see this, sir. Uh, ten minutes, all right? Okay. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm not Mum. And I cannot be like her. She's gone and I have to go my own way too. Oh, I know that. Please, Dad. Don't impose Mum's perfection on me, yeah? I know what I'm doing. Gwyn went to two, you know, and, well, I wouldn't let him. Good for you. Don't you think it's easy for your head to say no when your body's saying yes? I love him, Dad. Well, at least I think I do. Just be sure before you uh, commit yourself. Well, that's exactly what I am doing. I'm sorry, I've got to go. I can't take any more of this. I didn't lay a finger on him, but my life is ruined anyway. Perhaps it's true. Perhaps he never touched him. Could have been a consenting relationship that went badly wrong. Too much booze, too many pills. And the rent boy, if that's what he was, dies accidentally. And Erland is so frightened he tops himself. It could be that straightforward. Right. Search the gardens. And then we meet back at the MIR. Three o'clock. Right, sir. Paul, come with me. Alison, check that suicide note against Erlen's handwriting. Okay, are fingerprints on Alistair again, sir? Well, of course. Sir, if this isn't a murder inquiry, do we have to have all these officers here? There are too many unanswered questions. And unfortunately, the one person who could have answered most of them is dead. Yes, but it doesn't look like a murder now, does it? The corpse was wrapped in something and carried a half a mile to that fire pit. Now, I'm not convinced that a man of Erlen's age and condition could manage it on his own. He had help. And the sooner that forensic can come up with what that body was wrapped in, the better. And the tire marks, and the footprints. Christ, do you know half this team seem to think the whole thing is a joke? Because gays are involved, and the rest of you can't wait to get shot of it quickly enough. I'll check forensic again then, sir. What? I'll check forensic again then, sir. Thank you. <laughs> what? what? I think we've moved on a bit in the last few hours. Ali. Right. 
Uh, forensic have just sent a fax, and the tyre marks in the field match those of Roy Erland's car, but there are two sets of footprints. One matches Erland's, and the other, well... Anyway, we now know for certain that somebody else helped Erland carry the body into the field. They also say that the body was wrapped in some sort of heavy material, a blanket house. Good. Karen. These were dug up in the garden at Penabrim. Swansea City scarf. We're checking the club supporters list at the moment. List? How many are there then? <laughs> <laughs> now then, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Mr. Francis, the club secretary, has invited us all in for a drink in the clubhouse bar because Jagos RFC have something to celebrate tonight. Yeah, young Gethin, you mean? Just been appointed as the Welsh youth team coach. And I am proud to say that Yayan and I have been friends for a very long time. In fact, I taught him all he knows. <laughs> right, come on. Right, well, I'm, I'm not a man of many words, as you know. But I'd like to say thank you to a couple of people. Thanks to Mansell Francis. Yay! And the Dregos Club for supporting me. Yay! And for giving me the chance of working with the finest group of players I've ever come across. Yay! They were bloody marvellous this afternoon, weren't they? <laughs> well done, boys. It was only my work with you lads that put me in the frame for this job. Now, I couldn't have done it without you. Aww. So, thanks, lads. And there's a hundred quid behind the bar from me, so get pissed. Yeah. There you go. Go on in, for me, will you? Oh, you won't come in? Wish I hadn't. You look a mess. Oh, thanks a bunch. <laughs> Have to happen sometimes, see? Hey. Well, Noel, <laughs> how good to see you. And you, congratulations. Oh, thanks. I don't know how I'm going to cope with everything, but uh, there we are. Ah, uh, you'll manage. Yes. Well, <laughs> she's turned out to be a beauty. Anna? Yeah. A real cracker. Credit to you and Irene. It's a hard job to get Gwyn to concentrate on his game at the moment. Hey, mother? No, I can't. Go down to Swansea. What on earth for? Oh, with Kate. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, terrible business. It's going to make some people's lives a misery. How come? I don't like to this lot find out what's been going on up in that house in the Kumbu. Anyway, well done again. See you. Thanks. Time, sir. Saturday is always our busiest. Get a scumbag from all over West Wales dropping in on us. Look. He's lucky he'll be back in half an hour. Pick up another one. You've had enough as well, haven't you? There's only so much the human frame can take. I didn't mean the booze. Nor me. So long, then. So long. I was just about to give up. I thought Dad was with you. No, he's in Swansea. I'd like him to have a look at these as soon as possible. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Thanks for calling me by my real name. Nobody does that anymore. What's your name? Noel Payne. Who are you looking for, Noel? I don't know his name. I don't even know if he comes from around here. He's about 17. Your size. And he'd probably been on the game for some time. You mean he's dead? Yeah. There, but for the grace of God. Hey, you're a boy for the quotes, aren't you? Just because I sell my ass, <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm stupid. 
O mi invitas. He sounds like a lot of people I know. He was wearing a Swansea city scarf. Yeah. Ring any bells? It might do. I need time to think. Where can I get in touch? What's this? Take an hour off. An hour? You could have me for a day for 20 quid. Hey, Jacko! Lewis. Christ. He's just a kid. So are you. Not asleep yet? No. It's all right, there aren't any men looking in here. Thank God. Sunday morning. Damn. Noel. Yeah. Good moment. Yes, yes. Come through. business, will you? Hey, don't talk to mummy like that. Ah, uh, you know, Gwyn, superstar here. Yeah. We met. I'll, uh, take this up. You two chill that boy's heart, I'll tell you what. We haven't had a strong, fast centre since the days of Fenwick and Gravel. Go in. Did you know Roy Elland? Uh, yes, I knew him. Then you know he's dead? It gets around. Suicide, wasn't it? Looks that way. How well did you do him? Well, not very well. Uh, I fit an alarm system for him up at Penabrin. So when was that taken? Doors. Always in here. Dumb nuisance. Yeah, yeah, please. The photograph. The sooner you tell me about it, the sooner I'll be out of here. It was taken in August 1991. This goes no further, right? Of course not. You know what would happen if it got out. All inquiry files are strictly confidential. I did fit an alarm for Roy. I liked him. It didn't take me long to realize that he was like me. If we'd been living almost anywhere else, I wouldn't have had to lead a double life, but... We'd meet occasionally for a drink, chat, nothing more. No? No. Being gay doesn't mean that you try to pull everything in trousers. And before you say it, I've never tried anything on with any of the boys in the club either. I wasn't on the Senate. Oh, no, but you were thinking it. You're straight, right? 
And you try it on with any of the women officers? No. Well, why not? Because it's work. Exactly. There's plenty around here would tar and feather me. Or worse. But frankly, rugby's more important. Soon after we met, Roy organised a little weekend in Amsterdam. I fancied going. Who else was on the trip? Oh, a couple of friends of Roy's. I didn't know them. But you got to know them? No. I'd never met them before and I haven't seen them since. What were their names? Uh, Alan and Wayne, I think. I think. Well, we didn't mix a lot uh, on the same flight, stayed in the same hotel, but, uh, well, they did their things. And I did mine. Why did Roy kill himself? I don't know. If I did, I'd tell you. You know that, more. So, what do you do in Amsterdam? Oh, sightseeing. Clubs? No, bloody art galleries. I don't go chasing cheap thrills. I'm telling you no. It was an opportunity to see Amsterdam. Well, Roy and the others knew some places, wanted me to go with them. But I didn't. Too scared, I suppose, and... Uh, what? Young boys. That has never interested me. Ever. He'll do ten miles now. <laughs> Hope he can see where he's going. He's not gay, if that's what you're worried about. And I'm his landlord, not his lover. I'm glad to hear it. Bloody hell. Are you here as a policeman? Or as a parent, Noel? was used by a person or persons unknown for their gratification and then just tossed aside. Now that offends me, I am. As a policeman and as a human being. Morning. It's Sunday, Carwin. It's a day to be with wives and families. Anyway, we can't afford to pay you double time. It's an off-duty visit. Is that? Yes, it is. And I don't want it to go further than these four walls. Sergeant. Hello. Lewis. You okay? Yes. Tarnowell. The boy. I've asked around. I think he was called Michael. I don't know what his second name was, but he's about my age. And he always wore a Swansea City scarf. Nobody's seen him for about three days. Why didn't people think that strange? Kids like him are always disappearing. So his name was Michael? And he's been missing for three days. That could be him. One of the boys that I spoke to said he had a lot of work from one man. Yeah? It's just that I saw the man in the bus station this morning. He drove off with one of the boys. Do you know his name? No. Do you get the car number? It might not be the same car. Well, that's not We can eliminate it. The car number, that's important. Where have you been? Out. Errands, things to do. I'm going out again as well. Please don't go out again. I don't want to be on my own today. 
I'll be back later. We'll go out, cheer you up a bit. Oh, please don't be long. If Mummy wants nice things... No. I don't want nice things. I just want one thing. Helen. I can't bring him back. I thought you'd like the transcript of the post-mortem and uh, the full analysis on the boy. Michael. We think his name is Michael. He was pumped full of drugs. Makes a fascinating Sunday morning read. Oh, I can just see you and Jeremy reading it, tucked up together in bed. My name. No, Will. Come out for a minute, will you? What's up, then? There's something I've been trying to tell you for the last couple of days. Jeremy and I have decided to live apart for a while. How do you feel about that? Things have gone from bad to worse. He's never home. I'm never home. We drift through each other's lives like strangers. I thought you ought to know. Where are you going to live? In the house. Jeremy's moving out. Bloody great boy. Thanks. A champagne. No thanks. Like I was saying the other day, we've got to look after you now. I was having a word with a treasurer last night, and he tells me you haven't got a car. Yeah, I don't need one. Excuse me. Bollocks to you, then. Do you have to come in here? Mr. Francis has invited us to use the facilities. You want to speak to me? Yes. Come on, then. Is this going to be a regular occurrence? Depends on how straightforward you are with me. Do you think I'll be lying to you? Yeah, yeah. We either do it like this, or we go to the NIR where everybody will see you. What do you want to know? The name of the hotel in Amsterdam. Dates, flight times, anything. Everything. I want to know who the others were with you. Alan Foxall, but... Hmm? He died last year. Of what? What do you think? Did he and you ever? No. Thank God. We flew out of Rus, uh, 18th of August, I think. I can't remember the name of the airline. We'll check. The hotel. I can't remember the name. Hi, Larry. Hi. You look like I feel. What do you mean? Here's the fun, here's the shit. Calvin. I am not in the mood, and I haven't had my Sunday lunch yet, all right? What about this, then? Yeah, young get thin. I know. Oh. Did you know he went to Amsterdam three years ago with Roy Erlen? No. Yes. And with two other gay friends. Yeah, young get thin. Can you believe that? Yes. Why not? Well, he's a rugby coach. So what? Yeah, well, so much for my preconceptions. I've just been speaking to the Dutch police. The same month, they found a young Welsh lad dead in the Damrak, under suspicious circumstances. Heavy drugs or deep. We couldn't do anything at the time. We couldn't help. There wasn't a report of a missing youth. But the case is still open. Who was the fourth man? I don't know. I don't think he was a local man, even. Really.
Well, you know where to find me. If you do remember his name. Hardly bloody miss you out there. Loyal. What would the charge be then? Well, he wasn't murdered, was he? According to the papers, he choked on his own vomit. Sounds like it was just an accident. So why not get an ambulance? Fear. Being found out for what you are. Secret. You can't share. We want our trainers too. What? Trainers. Whoever helped Roy was wearing trainers. Where was that? It's registered to a company called Timmy Holdings, Swansea address. How do you spell that? Yeah. We'll find out who the directors are. But it's Sam Lisa. I know when that. When will you be arriving? But if I'm going to miss rugby special, oh, I don't see why the rest of the world shouldn't make sacrifices too. Yeah, to... look forward to that. How to let them be down? Yes, look at that. The Dutch police are sending someone over. First available flight tomorrow. Oh, that's cooperation for you. That's what the European community is all about. Yeah. Didn't tell him anything? No. Not yet. What's that supposed to mean? The only way is to come clean. Get it all out in the open and hope to God that people will understand. Oh, don't be so naive. Well, what's the point if it's all going to come out anyway? Why should it come out? Josh, they want to see my shoes. They know there was somebody else in the field with Roy. It was me. I helped him to carry that boy. They want to see my shoes. Well, don't give them your shoes. I must steal them. Someone else's shoes. Burn your shoes. Jesus, I thought you were a real fighter. Josh. I'm bloody tired of skulking in the dark corners. Do you think they're going to forgive you? Do you think they're going to let you near those boys again? Do you think they're going to understand? Because if you do, not only are you naive, you are very stupid. Oh, it's you. Come in, I'm on a phone. Hello, Mr. Francis. No, it wasn't him. Yes, as soon as I see him. Cheerio. You look awful. Oh, you really know how to make a guy feel good, don't you, Hannah? Well, I prefer the shape your nose it was before. My nose will be all right when the swelling goes down. Talking of uh, swellings... Landlord's out. Is that all you ever think about? Oh, I am sorry. What do you want? Some help with your own work, is it? Hannah! Hannah! Hannah, please! Lovers, too. Lovers! That's a laugh. Mansell phoned, wanted to know where the bloody hell you were. Well, what? Nearly, huh? Get rid of these for me. And all my other trainers. Stick them in a bag and sling them. You're joking? No. Do it. And give me your trainers. <laughs> what for? I've done a lot for you, good boy. Now you do something for me. The shoes. Well, they won't fit you. I'm not going to wear them. He must have a problem. There's no other reason why he missed doing this. Where the hell have you been? Problem. Family matter. You made me look a right bloody pillock. You what? Fran. Sorry, mate. Hey, how are you? Have you still got time? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Right, let's set up, lads. Who's that man? Dan? Oh, he's a little customer. These. Paul, just leave them alone, will you? God. This is sick. 
Well, that's what some people like. Children? So, babies? People do things to babies? Look, I'm in a hurry. How can they touch this filth? Because it sells, that's why. Now, get out. Yeah, but they're only children. Jesus Christ, will you shut up? Just shut up! I mean, it could be our baby, couldn't it? Marry Jimmy! It wasn't him! This week, the little village of Tregorce has been living under a cloud cast by two mysterious deaths. But if there is a little light in the gloom over Tregorce this week, it's in the news that Yian Gethin's been appointed as Wales' new under-21 rugby coach. Yeah, yeah, and what are the prospects for this game? But it. What's going on? What's the process? Hello. Sorry about that, Fran. Okay, we'll start again. Okay. Yain Gethin, thanks very much indeed. This is Fran Rankin from Tregorce Rugby Club for TD TV. And cut. Great, thanks very much indeed, Yain. Don't forget, it's on the early show tomorrow morning. If you can get up that early, of course. Oh, I'll be up, Fran. Uh, some of us still do a proper job here. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Best of luck. See you again. Okay. Cheers now. Bye. Some of those kids have no expectations beyond the next day. The next fix. It's terrible, but it's a world I know nothing about. No, not many of us do. Not even their family seem to know or care. And Michael, well, he was just another one of them. Michael? Hmm. The boy in the fire pit. Why are you persecuting me in oil? You're just helping me with my inquiries. This is unofficial. No, just you and me. No tape recorder. Nothing. Has any of your circle of friends got a Volvo? Why? When Michael was seen getting into one the day that he died. I'm getting tired of this. See, that was probably the car that delivered him to Roy and his playmates, delivered him to his death. Who's in that house here? How the hell should I know? Have you got evidence? used condoms. Did they have sexual intercourse with that boy? We've checked the condoms. There were at least three other people there, apart from Roy Erland. Do you know who they were? No. Possibly friends of yours? No. He was awash with booze and stuffed full of drugs. Speed, coke, it's a right lethal cocktail. And whoever encouraged him to take all that might as well have killed him. Because it was the same as murder. You were asking what the charges would be. Well, here you are. Illegally disposing of a corpse. Buggery with a male under 18. Possibly manslaughter. Not to mention the drugs offenses. That's what I'm going after in the courtroom when I catch those... Gave him a blood test, you see? Well, at least the pathologist did. That's how she discovered what he'd been drinking. What he'd been taking, what he'd been snorting. And that's how she also discovered about the other thing. 
Michael was HIV positive. You say you don't know those men? No. Now bloody well leave me alone! Yayan? Clubhouse. Now! is in today's papers. Everybody knows now what Bain is here for. He's up to his armpits and perverts. Well, he's been talking a lot to you. He's an old friend. Has he been asking you about all that bloody filthy carry-on at Penabrin? The dear hell, Mansell. Don't you talk to me like that. your own time in your own house is your own business. If you are bent, that's your problem. And if anything, anything sullies the good name of this club, you can bugger off, boy, and be quick about it. No, there was a fire last night in the warehouse at Swansea. Suspected arson. Hey, fascinating. What about it? According to the owner of the building, it was rented by Timmy Holdings. Who also owned the Volvo? Yeah. Right. According to Alison, Timmy Holdings is registered in the name of two directors. Helen and Josh Parfit. Good. Let's have a word with them then. We're looking for them now. Good. Where is Alison? She's gone over to Rus Airport to meet Detective <coughs> Regisseur Surbir. Who? The detective that the Dutch police sent over. And Mia Surbir. She sounds tasty too, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah, he's here now. Oh, yes, I'll tell him. Be glad to. Ta da. Well, you got to tell me. Uh, Gwen, how long were you out for? I uh, were just over, why? Which way did you go? My usual route. What have you got to tell me, man? It's important that you maintain your training schedule properly. Oh, I know that. Especially if you're playing for the Wales A team against Ireland. What did you say? <laughs> you're in. What did you bloody say? Just a squad, man. Yeah, but I'm bloody in, no? <laughs> yes! I'm in! Hey! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yeah. The body was found here, in a disused warehouse off the Dumrock. An overdose. But not self-administered. He was pumped full of neat heroin. Users don't make mistakes like that. No, they prefer the slower way to death. Exactly. And the Welsh link, Miss uh, Detective... Anya, that is my name. Sorry, I've never worked uh, with anybody from your country before. <laughs> And you were hoping for a tasty blonde, I suppose. You've got to. I can't. There's enough evidence in the laboratory to convict us both. I didn't do anything. You were there when the boy died. You helped carry his body to the fire pit. You came with me to see Roy the night he decided to kill himself. Because of the threats you... And I made against him. Just one more job. Then it'll all be over? Yes. You won't see me again. With any luck. Right. The boy had friends in Amsterdam. They told us that he was from Swansea, 
and that he often ran little errands between there and Amsterdam. Drugs, you mean, Nanya? Drugs. And what we now know is that he stayed in a hotel that weekend in August 1991. Now, when Sergeant Phillips sent us the names of Erland and Gesson, we ran a check on the hotel registrations for that month. Prinzner Hotel Vickerstraat. Erland, Foxhall, Githin, Moffat. The boy in the warehouse. And Parfit. That's it. Who's he? Josh Parfit. The name that Yay and Githin can never quite remember. Is he gone? What's it all about, yay? My past. Catching up with me. Yay. I've been such a stupid <laughs> bastard. No, you haven't. How do you know? Just that it's not your fault. There are four J. Parfits on the electoral register. None of them with any previous. I'll check them all, but discreetly. We don't want to panic him. Just find him, then we'll move in. Anya, have you been offered nourishment? No. Then please, may I apologize on behalf of these peasants? Hey. You can't do it, Yayan. I've got no choice. Yes, you have. I'll go. Don't be stupid. I'm not. I'm not having you getting involved in my problems. The whole thing's a big enough mess as it is. And the last thing you need is to get caught with Parfit. Show me the plans. Tell me what I've got to do. No, Gwyn. Look, this is my future as much as yours we're talking about. Oh, what do you mean? How did I get picked for the whale squad? No selectors came to see me. No, it was done by recommendation. Exactly. And if you're found out and discredited, they'll turn their backs on you and everything you've done for the game, including me. I owe you a lot, Yayan. Get the plans. I'm hungry. The breakfast on the plane was so small. You have been Holland, don't you? Of course we do. And chauvinist big star. Right, Alison, uh, it's a gin and tonic. Yes, please. And uh, vodka. With orange, of course. So it's one gin and tonic and a vodka and orange. No, well, boys, not working today, then. Postman. Uh, milkman. Plenty of time for training, see? Well, you know what kind of blokes you were looking for? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, plenty of puffs in the club, mind. Give us a kiss, I'll tell you who they are. Gee, that's funny. No bugger off, boys. That bloody queer got exactly what was coming to him. You heard what Mr. Bain said. Oh, come on. This is our club. Oh, come on, no boy. Hey, leave it. Get off. Come on. Oh, get All right, boys, that'll do. That'll do. Okay, all right. Stop it. Jeez. That'll do. What the hell is going on here? Just sticking up for the men of West Wales, Mr. Francis. Right. Outside, both of you. Come back when you cool down a bit. Have to move, Helen. It won't be long before they work it all out, you see. So start packing. One case will do. And find those passports. But I don't want to go, Josh. I don't want to move again. I like it here. And I'm close to him here. I know that, darling. But it's a very fragile business we're in. We have to cut our losses and be prepared to move at a moment's notice. Please, Mummy doesn't want to go, all right? Sir. Thank you. Anything interesting? 
Yeah, it's a forensic report about that scarf that we dug up. There were some fibers on it and cat hairs. What sort of cat? Tortoiseshell. Wrong. You haven't seen the afternoon paper? No. Good news. There's a novelty. Gwyn has been selected for the Welsh A squad against Ireland. Really? Really. That is brilliant. Yeah. That is brilliant. Brilliant. It's more than brilliant. Could be the start of an international oh, career. Yes. Um, do you remember last Thursday? You were with Gwyn, weren't you? Uh, yeah, when I watched the training. Yeah. And then he went back to his digs, Yayan's house. Now, was there anyone else there? We didn't go in. Did you see a, a Volvo car outside somewhere? Um, no, because Gwyn brought me back here to the hostel. What time was that? Why? Why are you asking me about Gwyn? What's he done? He hasn't done anything. Well, what the hell are you playing at then, Dad? Just to do that business up in Cum and Vran. And you're cross-examining me? There's someone else we need to talk to, that's all. Who's a friend of Yayan's. Well, ask Yayan about it and leave me and Gwyn alone. Edward Gethin, 13th of July, 1948. Also present is... Detective Regisseur Anya Serbia, Amsterdam Police. Will you confirm that there is no one else present in this room? There is no one else present. On the 18th and 19th of August, 1991, you stayed at the Prinzner Hotel in Wichestraat. I don't remember. Yes, you booked in with three other men. Alan Foxall, Roy Erland, and Josh Parfitt. Josh Parfitt. Ring any bells? Mr. Gethin shook his head. Well, it ought to, Yann, because you shared a room with him. No. Well, according to the hotel registration, you roomed with him at... Room 312. Foxall and Erland, 314. So now, do you remember? Josh, you said. Josh, I'd say. Josh, perfect. On Monday, August the 20th, the police were called to a warehouse off the Dumbark. And they found the body of Timothy Moffat. He'd been injected with a massive dose of heroin. Did you know him? No. Oh, that's odd. According to the hotel records, he joined your little party on Saturday afternoon. But you say you didn't know him? No. You got a cat. I'm sure. You haven't got a cat, tortoiseshell. I thought I saw one. Oh, that's the bugger from next door. Bloody nuisance. Keep on finding him on the sofa. Helen, look, I've got to go out just for a few hours. Then when I come back, we'll be safe. Don't answer the door. Don't go out. Understand? D.S. Phillips came into the interview room at 16.12. He is carrying a bag and 
containing a black and white scarf. The label on the bag identifies the scarf as Exhibit AB18. I'm not going to show it to you. Can you see it clearly? Yes. Have you seen this before? No. Swansea City, isn't it? That's right. It belonged to Michael. Michael. Oh, isn't that awful? I don't even know his last name. He was wearing this the night he died. The night Josh Parfit picked him up. The night that Josh Parfit brought him to your house. He did not. Yeah, yeah, you're lying. The boy did not come to my house. Are you saying that Josh took him straight to Roy's house? Yes. Well, then you do know Josh. See, we know that Michael has been to your place. This scarf has been examined minutely. Do you know they found cat hairs? Tortoiseshell. That proves nothing. I agree. But you've had a running battle with that cat, haven't you? It's a nuisance. Always comes into the house, you told me. Yes, but that doesn't mean to say... I know. But we've also found some minute traces of fabric attached to the scarf. From a bedspread, forensic thought. Now, maybe they match the covers of your bed. Come on, Yayan. Don't make things harder than they are. What happened in Amsterdam? Skigoli, where's Yayan? He's not coming. I've got the plans. I know how to deal with the alarm. You come in. Josh, he used the boy as a courier. Paid him to bring drugs over here from Holland. I think the boy was a junkie. He invited the boy back to the hotel for the night. We all took it in turns with him. During the evening, Josh said that the boy had been double-crossing him over the drugs. We all went down to this warehouse place. Josh said that he'd show us how he made sure that people didn't do that sort of thing to him. Why are you doing this? So he doesn't have to spend the rest of his life worrying about a scumbag like you. He's lucky. What? To have a friend like you. We couldn't believe what was happening. Josh always seemed so charming. He was so savage with the boy. Half it injected him with drugs. Yes. He told us he demanded total loyalty. And that this was the price of failure. The boy died painfully. Horribly. Right in front of our eyes. Pavit seemed upset. He wouldn't let us do anything. He said the boy was scum. Not worth bothering about. So what about Michael? And the party at Penabrin? I didn't touch him. Oh, come on, Yael. Believe me, Noel. When I found out that Alan had died of AIDS, I stopped. I thought we'd all caught it from Timothy. He was terrified. But he came to your house on Thursday night. Josh Parfit brought him, right? Yes, but I didn't touch him. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Later on, we went up to Roy's house. I only stayed an hour or so. I had a, a training session. Michael was alive when I left Pen Abrin. You 
and the law and this backward, bloody society. You criminalize people like me and the Josh Parfits of this world flourish and it's your fault. Roy never had a chance. And Michael did. Or maybe he doesn't count because he's already been thrown aside. Is that it? It didn't matter about Michael because he was already just a piece of human flotsam when he was used and abused and dumped into that pit with a lot of stinking pigs. Is that how it was? No, that's not how it was. I tried to stop him. It was self-destruction and he encouraged it. Who? Parfit. Well, where is he now? I don't know. Yes, you do know. Where is he now? I can't tell you. Are you still frightened of him? Are you still trying to cover up for him? No. Not him. Hello, Mrs. Edwards. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Right, boys, we're off.
I had this terrible vision ending up in my own PM room. <laughs> Would you get Parfit? Yeah. And Mrs. Parfit. She was married before, and her name was Moffat. Timothy was her son, and she had always believed that his overdose was accidental. Oh, my God. I can't understand what they were after in the lab. Parfit thought there was incriminating evidence then. But there isn't anything. No, it's a layman's mistake, mixing up pathology and forensic. And stop frowning. It will age you prematurely. I've got to go. Annie will miss a flight. I'll come back. Mm. For me. Oh, all right, then. Who was he? Ever find out? Mm. And his family will never know what happened to him. For kids like him, escaping is the best thing that can happen. To this? Yeah. Thanks for everything, Noel. So he's laying there moaning and groaning and saying in this poncy voice of his, oh, I say, I've got a terrible pain all the way from my clavicle to my sacroil. <laughs> and our skipper says to me, hey, we need a stretcher, you man. Stretcher, I said, stretcher my ass, fetch a bloody dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get cracking. Right. See if you can get these pups of ours knocked into some shit. He's unlikely to be prosecuted. He had some cockeyed notion that he was helping Yayan by going with Parfit. But he certainly saved Margaret from serious injury. And that'll come for something with the CPS. What about the selectors? Hmm? What about his rugby, Dad? His brilliant international career? I honestly don't know. I do. I'm sorry. I really am. Yeah, well, I'm sorry too. I'm sorry that I'm the daughter of a policeman, and I'm sorry about the way that your job seems to wreck people's lives and destroy them. I'm not talking about the guilty ones. Next week, it's DCI Bain who needs tracking down when he's kidnapped by an escaped killer. They're on Sky One Next. Wesley Crusher becomes involved in a cover-up in Star Trek The Next Generation.